Okay, now what I want us to think about now are the actual ways of finding those particular asymptotes, those vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Because if we can locate where a vertical asymptote is and where a horizontal asymptote is, it will help us to sort of sketch the graph because we'll know sort of the regions in which those functions will sort of live in. So let's just start, first of all, with the vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes, those are the asymptotes that are the straight lines that go sort of up and down, where the function will sort of come up to and want to caress, but actually will not touch. Or it might come up like this, or this, and so forth. But you can't cross it. How do you find them? Well, so suppose you have a rational function that's just the quotient f of x divided by g of x. And if you have this already in lowest terms, then the thing you have to ask is, where are the places that make the bottom 0 but the top wouldn't be? So you have to bring this into lowest terms and then make sure that you find places where the bottom is 0, the top isn't, and in fact, those would be vertical asymptotes. So to find vertical asymptotes, here's what you do. You take a look at the thing. You cancel away any common factors you may have. Take what's left, take the bottom, set it equal to 0, and solve. And those x's that you find, those are going to be the location of the vertical asymptotes. Okay? Because vertical asymptotes are basically just where the bottom is 0. But you have to remember to make sure you cancel everything first. And I'll show you the, the caution of that and why that's important. Let's start with an example. So the question here is not to graph. Let's just find the vertical asymptotes. So suppose we have a function. I'll call it, um, I'll call it p of x, and just for sake of diversity, 3 divided by 2x minus 4. I want to know, where does this have a vertical asymptote, if anywhere? Well, all you have to do is, first of all, make sure that this thing is in lowest terms. I can't cancel anything. So I set the bottom equal to 0. So if I set the bottom equal to 0, I'll see 2x minus 4 equals 0. And if I solve this, I see that x would equal 2. So this would be a vertical asymptote. So x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote. Great. See how easy that was? Let's try another one. How about this? Uh, p of x equals 5 plus 3x, there's a polynomial, divided by x squared plus 4x minus 5. How I find the vertical asymptotes here, I'll first factor the bottom. If I factor the bottom, I'll see 5 plus 3x still on top. And on the bottom, I see an x and an x. The minus sign means I have opposite signs here. And it looks like I want a 5 and a 1 just like that. And that's a good factorization of the bottom. Now, can I do any canceling? Well, no, because this is 5 plus 3x. That's one that doesn't match up with either this or that. So in fact, it's in lowest terms. Where are vertical asymptotes? Well, it turns out there's 2, because the bottom equals 0 at two places. We have x equals 1. That's where the first 1 equals 0. And then we have x equals negative 5. So in fact, here, we have two vertical asymptotes. And you can have two vertical asymptotes, being a one here, one here, and the function will live somewhere in between, and so on. So in fact, uh, in this example, we have two vertical asymptotes. OK, let's try a couple others. How about this one? Uh, f of x equals 4x cubed minus 3x all divided by 2x plus 4. Well, the top I can factor a little teeny bit. So I'll factor out the x. And then I'm left with a 4x squared minus 3. And that's all divided by, I guess I could factor out a 2 there if I wanted to, but I won't. <laughs> Fooled ya. And you can see there's no canceling that I can do here. So where does the bottom equal 0? I set the bottom equal to 0, and I see x would have to be negative 2. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Neat. OK, now let's try one where we'll have to be a little bit more careful. How about this? f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. Now it seems reasonable to say, hey, there's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1, because that makes the bottom 0. But you'll notice that that also makes the top 0. And so in fact, this is a problem. This is not in lowest terms. So I've got to actually factor the top 
it's the difference of two perfect squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. And then you see that, in fact, I can factor and cancel away the x plus 1 with the x plus 1. But remember, whenever you cancel, you have to make a promise to me. You have to promise that you're not dividing by 0. So in fact, you can only do this as long as x does not equal negative 1. So you have to promise that x doesn't equal negative 1. But given that as a promise, then you can cancel away. And I see that this function just equals x minus 1. Well, that's just a straight line. So in fact, this has no horizontal, I'm sorry, no vertical asymptote at all. <laughs> no va, no. Just, it's no vertical asymptote. No vertical asymptote. But there is this problem. x can't equal negative 1. So instead of a vertical asymptote, what we actually have is a little teeny hole. This is just a line, but it's going to have a hole right there because the function is not defined there. This is why you have to be careful of the numerator, too. And now you can see why. Just because the denominator is 0 doesn't mean the thing is going to actually inch up to something. In this case, we can cancel away and just get a straight line, but it's going to have a little hole drilled out of it when x equals negative 1. No asymptote, just a little missing point. OK, one last example to try to drill this home. Suppose I look at this object, 9x minus 1 times x plus 3, all divided by 2x plus 6 times x minus 5. Well, let's see. Where are the vertical asymptotes here? You can just try to set the bottom equal to 0. I'll see x equals 5. And here, this would be x equals negative 3. But notice that there's an actual factor of x plus 3 on the top, so we have to be a little bit careful. And if we write this out as the top, but then the bottom I factor out that 2, then you see the x plus 3 factor actually hitting there in cognito. And I can now cancel these guys away as long as you promise me that x doesn't equal negative 3. But then in that case, this function just becomes 9x minus 1 divided by 2 times x minus 5. And where's the vertical asymptote now? Just that x equals 5. So x equals 5 is the vertical asymptote. And what happens at negative 3? Well, since both the top and the bottom canceled, all we're going to have is this function with a little hole drilled out at negative 3. So vertical asymptotes, the basic thing is you just look where the bottom is equal to 0, but make sure the top is not 0 there as well. If it is, factor away, see what's left, and then you'll have your answer. That's all I have to say about vertical asymptotes. Try these, see if you can find them for yourself.